Hey everyone, I'm Nathan Schrader and I'm kicking off a new series here on how to understand synthesizers. So uh, today we're going to look at analog monophonic subtractive synthesis. Uh, basically what that means is an analog synthesizer and how it works. We're going to be using the Moog Grandmother synthesizer to help us understand this process. I'll walk you through it, give you a little bit of uh, understanding about the flow of the signal as it moves through the synthesizer, the kind of sounds and effects you can get as you use the different pieces of the equipment, and then um, just show you some tips and tricks along the way too. But this is really intended to be a very basic introduction to analog synthesis. So if that's something you're interested in or just want to hear the sound of the Moog, um, this is a great place for you to start. So thanks for joining me and uh, let's get to it. All right, everyone, here we are with the Moog Grandmother uh, semi-modular analog synthes synthesizer. Uh, semi-modular simply means that it'll run as it's all set, but you can break the preset or normal patches with these patch points using patch cables which I'll do just a little bit later on to um, just give you uh, an example of what the high pass filter does. The way uh, analog synthesizer works is it starts with taking the electrical signal that comes in, the power, and turning it into waveforms or oscillations. That's where we get this idea of oscillators. And I'll work through all the panels here, but the best place to start is with the oscillators. Um, this synthesizer has two regular oscillators, oscillator one and oscillator two. And uh, what it does is produces a cyclical waveform. Now, if that sounds confusing, don't worry, just look at the oscilloscope um, and you will be able to see the shape of the waveform. So I'll walk you through just the first oscillator here, which means I turn it up here in the mixer oscillator one and it is set on a triangular waveform the triangle wave right here so as i play a c you can see in the oscilloscope the triangle form and that's the sound kind of a mellow sound there's also the sawtooth which you can see is kind of a chopped off triangle and we'll hear that much more buzzy sound, good for reed instruments, woodwinds, things like that. Then we have the square wave. And that can be great for brass sounds. Um, but you'll see the shape is a square, up and down. And then finally the pulse wave, which is an offset square. Um, and it's a little tricky to see on the oscilloscope, maybe a lower wave. No, just a little off. But what it is, it's a, you can see the illustration right there. It's a square waveform that's been pushed off center. So the high part is shorter than the low part of the cycle of the wave. Um, also, you'll see the number, different numbers here, 32 feet, 16 feet, 8 feet, 4 feet for oscillator 1. Those measurements actually come from the length of pipe on a pipe organ, some old school thing carried over to synthesizers, but it's basically just different octaves. So you'll see 32, 16, 18, and four. And you'll see on the oscilloscope, the, the waveforms just get closer and closer together as you go up. Uh, the second oscillator is just like the first oscillator. We'll turn that up here. Oscillator 2 should sound exactly the same, except you'll see it's an octave higher. Starts at 16 and goes up to 2 feet. So, oh, it's still on sawtooth. There we go. But this can be uh, tuned by hand. So you, I'll show you a little more what that means in a little bit, but same same four different waveforms. Now you'll see this big red button sitting there. That's the sync button. What that does is synchronize oscillator two to oscillator one. So whenever the waveform comes back to zero, it restarts the waveform cycle of oscillator two to keep them in tune no matter what. Here's what they sound like without the sync button in if you detune them. <laughs> Thank you. 
and you can do some cool stuff where you can almost get chords and even though you can only play one note at a time on this synthesizer you can uh, get multiple notes sounding But listen to the sound when we move the frequency of oscillator 2 once it sinks. It gets very metallic, a really cool sound. And down, and if we put it on sawtooth, it's even more intense. All right, so there is our oscillator section. Um, which gives us our, our, our original tones coming out of it. I think I'll lo leave it on sawtooth because those are kind of better sounds to hear more intense. A little out of tune there. Let's tune it up again. And if you just bring it off a little bit, you get this nice phasing sound going on. All right, so moving along to the next section here, we have our mixer section. And that's just what it sounds like. All this is is the volume of oscillator one, volume of oscillator two, and then the noise source. And you might think, why do you want noise? Aren't you trying to get rid of noise when you're recording things? But noise is a great addition to a synthesizer. It adds some grit. It can add a little reality. If you're trying to imitate some natural instruments, a trumpet or or a oboe or something, a little bit of wind sound comes breath when you're playing. But it's also great at making some of those just crazy wind wild sounds. And I'll show you what that sounds like in just a bit here. But so all this does is turn up the different oscillators. Oscillator one, oscillator two, and noise. Um, and typically with analog synths, the main noise source you're going to get is white noise, which is an even distribution of all the frequencies across the spectrum. Uh, sounds a lot like static on the radio or a TV. Making percussive sounds. You know, if you just want a quick, punchy percussive sound of a snare drum or, or a hi-hat or cymbal, that's a great thing to use. Oh, one other thing about the mixer I didn't mention. Once you go past um, 12 o'clock on the mixer, you'll start seeing the distortion that happens. It kind of flattens out the top of the waveform there. You can see the top of the mountain getting cut off. And that's something that Moog's mixers are known for. You can overdrive them. That's actually what you're doing. And get kind of a warm, buzzy, um, distorted sound without any external effects. So that's a great uh, thing to know that you can add to it. Well, moving forward then, you'll get to your utilities section. And what that is, is a multiplier up here. So if you plug in a signal coming in, it replicates that signal and you can plug them out into any other place on the synthesizer. This gets a little more complex than a normal monophotic synthesizer, but it's great once you start using patch cables. If you want to replicate something, you can put it in. Or if you have two inputs, then it sums or adds those two signals together to bring it out. Here is a high pass filter, and this is where I'll plug in um, some patching here. So we'll take the, um, let's see, the output of the mixer, put it in to the input of the high pass filter, and then take that out of here and plug it in to the filter, which is the next step in the process. Uh, so what a high-pass filter does is it cuts out the low information and only lets the high frequencies pass through. And I'll just show you what that sounds like here. This is with it fully open, so it's not affecting it at all. And now, so you see it cuts out all those low frequencies. And if I do it up here, you can see it on the oscillator a little, or oscilloscope a little better. You see it cuts the low parts out, and you just get the high. And that can be great for uh, different kinds of things, especially if you're imitating cymbals, um, snare drums. It's nice to get that high cut. All right, moving along is probably the thing that Moog is known best for. Their filters. Beautiful, warm, melodic-sounding 
filters, uh, very musical. And what this filter does, as opposed to the high pass filter, this is a low pass filter. So only the frequencies below the, the frequency of the knob are what allow to pass through. And I'll show you what that sounds like with a filter sweep. it out and it can cut it all the way out so there's no signal coming through turn it up the next thing moving down here is the keyboard tracker so this allows your keyboard to affect the filter as well so lower notes will be more filtered and higher notes less filtered so you can hear it open up a little bit as you go higher um, Right here is the resonance. This is called a self-resonating uh, filter. So as you turn this up, it actually ups the peak of um, the signal wherever the knob is pointed on the cutoff. So let's just hear what that sounds like halfway up. You start getting that real nice filtering sound. And if you crank it all the way, it self-oscillates which means you can turn down your mixer there's no oscillator or noise coming in and you still get and you can even play melodies on it and then there's one other piece here that interacts with the next part of our synthesizer, the envelope. So this is how much of the envelope affects the filter. And this is where you can get some of those cool plucky sounds. So that's what it sounds up. And if I turn it down, you miss that personality that it gives. So whenever you turn the envelope amount up, it actually turns up the kind of the frequency that you're going to hear from the cutoff. So you need to adjust that. And if you crank the resonance, you can really hear that hit. So that is uh, the amount of the envelope being sent back to the cutoff uh, filter here. So now let's look at the envelope. This is a key part of synthesizers that really allow uh, personality to be given to each note you play. Um, right now, all I have is the sustain turned all the way up. The four parts of an envelope are the attack, the decay, the sustain, and the release. And uh, Moog decided to do an interesting thing with this envelope. They have the knobs, which they usually have on most of their envelopes. But then for the sustain, they put in a slider very similar to like a DJ slider. It's really nice. Um, and it allows you to play the filter or play the envelope a little more by hand than you would if it was just knobs. So I'm going to play through this and let you hear the different pieces of the envelope and how they affect the sound. So here, all we have is sustain. So there's no journey that the uh, sound is going on as it, it hits. As soon as you hit a note, you get the full sound. Now, as we turn up attack, the first part of the envelope, the first part of the journey of the sound, it sounds like this. So you hear it come in, a slower attack. And this can get real slow. And there you go. So attack is a nice way to kind of ease into your notes, almost bring life to them as they play. Uh, moving down to decay, this is something between decay uh, and sustain, these two play together. So once the note reaches its full amount, then decay tells you how long it takes to come back to wherever the sustain is set. So let's just hear what that sounds like. We'll hear the attack get louder and then it'll go to the decay and show you uh, how long it takes to come back down to this sound. And if I turn sustain all the way off, you'll hear it even more. So that's decay. So no matter how long I hold this, decay has come into play. And then I can turn sustain up if I want. And uh, this is a great way if you just want some plucky, plucky sound. Just turn that on, crank up the resonance, and you get some of that. 
And then release is how long the note is held or how long it decays at the end of holding a note. So how long it's, um, if I turn this up, you'll hear it's longer. And of course, just like the attack, you can get real long on that decay or that release. All right, so that's the envelope section. The next one is volume. So you obviously, it's just your overall volume. And there's a little uh, switch here that can be the envelope is in effect, ENV. The keyboard and the release are only used. So even if I have a long attack, it's not gonna affect it as much. It'll affect the, um, the filter envelope, but it won't affect the volume of it. Here we go. And then over here is drone, which just holds whatever last note you've played forever. Which is nice because in the old sense, if you wanted a drone like that, you'd have to put a penny under a key or a shoestring or sometimes even a patch cable. And that really took a toll on the keyboard over time. I see some guys who just put some tape over a key and hold it down so they can get that. But Moog was kind enough to include a drone selection. Now there's one more key part of this that we didn't talk about. And that is the modulation um, that gives you movement and life to your sound beyond just the envelope. And it's another oscillator. It's called a low frequency oscillator, which means it moves much slower than your oscillators up here that produce sound, though it can go so fast, it goes into audio rate. So technically, with the self-resonating filter, the two oscillators and the low frequency modulator, um, oscillator, you could run this as a four oscillator synthesizer. That's for another video. All right, so let's hear what this sounds like. You can send the modulation to the pitch. So here's what that sounds like. And you can send it to the filter. And if we turn up the resonance, it'll be even more obvious. And then you can also um, send it to the pulse width amount. So if we set these to pulse width, which that pulse is the farthest one over, you will hear how this sounds. It gives some movement and uh, just an interesting sound to your oscillators. And a lot of times I like to keep it a pretty slow rate when I'm doing pulse width modulation. Now there's actually five different waveforms you can get going out here. First is the, uh, I'll just do this with pitch because it's the most obvious. Uh, the, the sine wave, and this is actually the only sine wave LFO um, on here, but there's also a sine wave when you get the resonance cranked up. But here's what that sounds like. <laughs> So there's a lot you can do with that. I mentioned there's five waveforms and I only talked about the four that you can see right here is a sample and hold output. Um, another thing people will call that is the random. So basically it steps through different, um, the process is interesting. What it is, is it, it samples the a waveform at random different points. And so it sounds random. Um, actually regular different points, but because the waveform runs differently than when it's sampled, it sounds random. So what I'm going to do is apply this to the pitch of this oscillator and you will hear how this sounds.
So you get some of that great old 60s and 70s radiophonic workshop kind of sounds coming out when you use that. And that can be applied to any place there's a patch point going in um, there. All right, I'm not going to talk about any more patch points because that's a whole other video. And now if I turn up the spring reverb right here, right away you can hear the sound that's going and you can mix it to 100% wet. So the only sound you hear is going through a spring reverb. So what is a spring reverb? Actually, it's just a spring in a, in a can about this big underneath here that the signal comes in and the vibrations of the spring then are picked up on the other end of that, that little can and uh, then you get the spring reverb. One of the fun little tricks you can do with this is you can play the spring reverb by hitting your synthesizer. Now, I don't know if that's the best thing to do, but hey, people do it all the time. People treat guitars much worse than that. So there's a little spring reverb fun for you there. So those are the basics of the analog synthesizer, the oscillators, the mixer, the utilities with the high pass filter, the low pass filter with envelope and resonance, the envelope attack, sustain, or attack decay, sustain, release, and then the modulation the low frequency modulation that can affect pitch, cutoff, pulse width, and your different waveform options. Well, thanks for spending time with me today. This was great. Uh, hopefully it was helpful for you and you were able to learn some new things about synthesis, about sound design, and maybe just about the Moog or grandmother. Um, Please, if you want to know more, leave a comment about the different things you'd like. If there's any questions or something you saw I said wrong or misspoke about, leave those in the comments. Um, like this video if you would, just so I know if this is something worth doing. And, you know, subscribe if you're interested in this. Share it with someone else who might have some similar interests to you or would find this helpful. Thanks so much. Hope to see a lot more of this coming in the future. Have a great day and God bless.